Ripley, where Riviera produce, we're farming um, uh, uh, several acres, well, over over six and a half thousand acres in uh, West Cornwall. Um, our, the main crop we're growing are brassicas, which um, range from cauliflower, calabrese, uh, spring greens, pointed cabbage, savoys, and, and so on. We're spread from the Lizard Point up to Padstow and across to the Roseland. So we got several different locations, soil types, microclimates, soil types, anything from very light sand to heavy clay, um, which you know is challenging, um, as every every grower would say. Soil is a really essential asset for farmers. We need to manage it and protect it for crop production now and also into the future. So we really need to make sure that we're keeping soil in the field and stop it running off into watercourses. Soil can carry with it nutrients and pesticides that can impact on water quality as well. So keeping soil in good health and in the field is particularly challenging when you're growing crops like field vegetables. This particular field was in um summer cauliflower um, so we, we harvested uh, cauliflower off this field in July um, and then first week of August uh, when the crop was finished it was um, lightly dissed over we lightly dissed in the cover crop of uh, phacelia linseed and clover we've been doing this for two or three years now um, and we've noticed a, a, a great improvement in the soil structure and the, the amount of wildlife uh, such as worms um, and all the stuff you can see um, so that the, the, the soil health is definitely improving through, through this practice. You see more worms so they're all, all busy all being protected by the by the cover crop above them and, you know some lovely crumbly pre-soil there that Cover crops can be a really useful way of improving soil health. They can be used to increase the soil organic matter by incorporating cover crops into the rotation. That means that you're increasing the ability of the soil to hold water and water will infiltrate into the soil better when it's in good health. And the roots can grow better and the, the crop is more drought resilient because you've got that better water holding capacity as well. So here we are planting um, spring greens. Um, right, right behind the um, corn stuff. Um, so uh, the preparation here was to run the batter stack carrier over it a couple of times. All straight in with the strip tiller and the planter. What we're finding with the strip tiller is better soil drainage, more even crops, um, because every plant has got the same chance. We're finding that we are getting um, harvesting rigs stuck in this sort of ground because the ground's consolidated and holds up all the machinery so we're not causing compaction and ruts. All you're doing is cultivating the one strip you need to put the plant in. Um, he's down at sort of uh, 8 inches, 9 inches, so the, you know, the, the root of the plant will go straight down and as it's going down the plant goes out sideways in, in between the there's layers of the soil, you can find the layers of the soil and go sideways as well. So um, you are using all of the field, um, even though you think you're just using the one slot. The more that the soil is disturbed, the more that the soil biology within that soil is disturbed as well and broken up and, and doesn't work as well. And to have good soil health, we really need the essential elements of biological, chemical and physical aspects of soil all functioning well together. So if we can avoid over cultivating the soil, trafficking too much from the soil and reduce the damage that we're causing to the soil biology, it can actually work better for us. Techniques such as strip tillage are really a good step forward in this aspect because they're really just cultivating the part of the soil that we need to grow the crop into and avoiding disturbing the rest of the field. Like I've been saying, we've changed lots of things over the last few years. Um, we're, we're, we're cover cropping, we're, um, which is bringing in beneficials. Um, we're, we're, we're strip tilling ground, which is improving the structure and um, bringing the worms back. Um, it's, we aren't getting it all right. Um, I, I don't think we ever will get everything perfect. Um, but, um, it, you know, if you're thinking about going down this route, don't be afraid to try it. Um, and don't stick with, um, we've always done it like this. We're not going to change.
I think it's great to see the innovation that farms like Riviera are doing to try and improve soil health and make their crop production really more sustainable. We really need to work together on this because soil loss is a really widespread issue. The best place to start is to look at your soils and assess the soil health, get them tested for nutrients and pH, dig a hole, have a look at the structure and count how many worms you've got. And you can get advice from catchment sensitive farming or your own agronomist and other farm advisors and there's also some really good tools and resources out there so Think Soils is a great illustrated manual. The Leaf Simply Sustainable Soils booklet is really informative and useful and HDB Soil Health Scorecard there's lots of useful tools so have a look at them and the important thing is to keep looking at your soils and what you can do better. <music>